Oh no, I'm so sad. I lost my job. I can no longer complete my epic MacBook Pro setup with an Apple Pro XDR display. Wait a minute, what's that over there? Whoa, what's this? Is this the Bank Designer Monitor Monitor Pro Conceptua? The features of the Pro XDR display at a fraction of the cost. Seriously, it even comes with a stand. We're gonna be checking this guy out right now. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Let's just unbox this baby up. Oi, from the left to the right. I've been holding this, holding this to unbox with you guys. Maybe not turn it upside down where you guys are unboxing, but you get a CD, CD, if your computer has that. You got a manual, HDMI, but this guy works. Thunderbolt 3 and Got a nice big back brace for the stand. It's nice and heavy and chunky. Feels like it's gonna be fun to use. And we got access to the back right here. So I guess this, you slot in like that, just in there. So you got a button here to take off the stand and there's no screwing around. You just slot in like that. That's it. There is no screwing around. You just slot into the back and it plugs in. Oh yeah, la, 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 la. Look at the monitor. Fingers crossed it's not damaged. Let me know. Ba boom, this is the BenQ PD3220. This is the designer grade monitor, 10 bit color. Apparently it has a bit of anti reflective coating, not full on. We're gonna find out, let's see. How much reflection do you see over there? It's nice and big. Looks juice nice and thick. Look at the thickness over here. Look at that thickness. Nice, thick, juicy monitor. Goes up and down, easy to slide. Goes back and forward. I'm just gonna take a look at it myself because I've been showing you guys. Oh. Yeah, it's a nice, it's nice and big. It's only a few cracks from my unboxing. Kidding. <laughs> So let's put it on next to my MacBook Pro, see how it operates. Oh, this stand is nice and solid and it comes surprisingly free with this display. Monitor does also turn side to side. Even goes, look at that, vertical. Whew. I've never used a Thunderbolt 3 display before. So it's gonna be pretty fun seeing if it works. Usually I've been using this Apple display connector and it does actually get pretty warm when I use it. So I'm hoping that this TB3 cable will just allow me to access all the USB extra ports that I get with just one cable. So there is a power on switch just there and a little joystick for you to use just here. And there it is, it's turning on. Boom! We see something on the screen. And I'm gonna plug in my USB extension in the side of my monitor just test it out and see if USB flows through the Thunderbolt 3 and it does. So that's pretty cool. With one Thunderbolt 3 cable, you can access the monitor as well as access all the ports connected to the monitor. It's a lot nicer than using one of these little adapters, these guys, which only give you one USB. Whereas this one is Port City on the side, headphone jack, USB-C on the back. USB-A, USB-A, USB-B, HDMI, HDMI, display port, Thunderbolt. So there is a power on switch just there and a little joystick for you to use just here. You get to choose if you wanna use high dynamic range colors just there on the screen, choose your location, rotation, and you can even scale the display so it boosts the font size. So I can have nice big fonts on my screen. One thing I say is that it's pretty dark on the screen. So let's see if I can improve that. So it's at 100% brightness right now. That's 300 nits. And contrast is at five. And when I boost the contrast, I can see what's on the screen clearly. There is a slight bit of a reflections on my screen. It's coming from the back of my room. I've got a mirror, so it reflects the light coming in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just Get rid of the curtains. And yeah, now I can completely see the monitor. It's nice, it's bright, it's fresh. It's really nice just having these controls, just instantly being able to access it. 
This is the program I've been waiting for before I was operating in this aspect ratio, which is, it's good. So you can see the timeline, you can see all of the timeline, but what's bad is you lose a lot of the height. So now I've got that back with this monitor. So I can look at that, I can see a nice big screen of what's on my screen. It does feel a bit narrower, but it's kind of nice. I feel like, I feel like because this monitor is better quality than my last one, I can bring it closer to me so I can see more of the world. So I'm actually kind of liking this aspect ratio. I'm actually getting used to it already. I thought that switching from an ultra wide to just a normal one would be harder, but it's, it's, it's actually all right. So I've been using this monitor for a good few hours now and I'm slowly adjusting to the colors and the 4K screen and the aspect ratio. I gotta say, I love the colors. Let me just show you the difference between 10-bit and 8-bit right now. So let me show you on the left is HDR off and on the right is HDR on. So let's pause it here. What can you see on the left? Black as black. Look at the coat that she's wearing, black as black. On the right, it's all filled in. Look at the sky on the right. You can see that greenish, bluish tinge of the sea and the sky. Whereas here, it's black. You can still see the same level of brightness. Look at her face, very bright. Whereas on the right, you see a face, a beanie hat, the flames and the surrounding. Look at that, that's a mountain right there on the right. You can't see it with HDR off. Let's keep on going. This scene over here, look at the tiles. It's very, very dark, very, very dark over here. And look at the brightness, very, very bright. So you got a big contrast between the colors. Here, you still keep the level of brightness with HDR on, but you can see in the shadows now, you can see the brickwork, the quality, what exactly is happening around it. Look at this quality versus that quality. You can see a lot more with HDR on. Look at the brickwork, it looks very, very black over here, as if you can't see nothing's going on. Whereas here, you see the details, look at that white with the black, with the darkness. Everything is filled in. And now let's get to a complicated scene. This scene over here, very, very complicated. You got really bright, blooming light overexposing the scene. And on the left, it gets very, very dark very, very quickly. Whereas on the right with HDR on, it's still bright. But look at it there. You can see a lot more details in the brickwork. So that's the difference right there with HDR on and off. Of course, this was all recorded with a Sony a7 III 8-bit colors. So there's a lot more detail and crispness to be seen. But I'm just trying to show you why you need HDR on to see what the colors really look like. So not only do you get a three-year warranty, you also get individual calibration report. Each monitor is individually calibrated to make sure it is, well, it is, hmm. Let me see, what's this say? Hmm, yes, uh, that looks about, yeah, good. It makes it good. So as you can see, yeah, 10-bit colors, it's a lot, lot richer. But the caveat is you need to have HDR content. You do notice the quality, a little bit more colors in just normal using the Mac, but it's mostly seen if you have HDR content. So if you don't have HDR content, I guess you can live with 8-bit. I love that it supports all the color spaces. I love that it's got a MacBook control. If you choose 8-bit, the MacBook color profile makes it look exactly like the MacBook. Love that. I love that you can turn off the indicator light there and it's just a nice, very, very minimal display. The only logo I can see is on this plate over here. Now, another thing I want to try is I have a Thunderbolt 3 to 10 GBE adapter just here. Typically, I plug it in directly to my MacBook Pro but I wanna see if this monitor can just handle it for me because the more ports I have free on my MacBook Pro, it will allow my MacBook Pro to run cooler because it's more air to breathe. So I wanna see if that will just work. And it does actually register it because I do get the lights on the screen. That's nice, one less port for me to connect to on my Mac. Regarding the aspect ratio, I do love the height. It's just so nice to scroll through the pages and see a lot more text. I do miss the ultra wide format over here. Ultra wide was really nice having web pages side by side and getting a bit more width, especially when coding and stuff like that. That's not to say this isn't usable. I can still do applications side by side. For example, when I'm coding, okay, I got two multiple sets of codes, but before I was a bit overkill, I had two applications side by side. That's a bit too excessive for this monitor. You can still have web pages and they look I guess they look fine nowadays because it's kind of like looking at two portrait mobile phones side by side rather than squares. So I am getting used to that and I'm enjoying that. But now it's time to do the deed, do the damage. We're gonna be rebooting this bad boy. 
and seeing how this monitor performs doing our favorite task, productive task, that is gaming on the MacBook Pro in Windows. Just need to wait for it to reset. All right, booting up for the first time. Let's see, will it work? Will I need to install any special drivers? Will this Thunderbolt cable just make Windows work? Yep, straight on the screen, play HDR games and apps. I like that. On, so that's what you need to do. Display settings and set it to HDR. And now it is enabled. So inside Windows Display, you click on Windows HD color settings once you enable it. And it gives you a nice preview of the colors. So this is with HDR on, and this is HDR off. As you can see, the sky is a lot more I guess the gradient is a lot more noticeable. Look at that, it's white to light blue. Just running Gears of War. Gears of War is great because you can play it with HDR on and HDR off. So you can enable or disable HDR as easy as that. As you can see, when you enable it, instantly you see a little bit more contrast. With HDR on, as you can see, the colors are a lot richer. And performance wise, what I'm seeing from these tests is that they're about the same, there isn't a big there isn't a performance penalty whatsoever. At first run, I noticed a 3% difference, but that was more to do with the MacBook Pro starting to overheat because after I ran it several times, the frame rates just seemed to even out. So with HDR on or off, I'm not seeing any performance delta on gaming with my MacBook Pro. So that's pretty cool. You can get the best quality graphics for free. Now regarding Windows, you can go on the Google and search for PD3220U and download the drivers there, unzip it, and you'll get a couple of files. You get the INF file, you right click it, you hit install, and all that will do is allow you to see in device manager in monitors. I can now see it says BenQ PD, and that's the situation there. They also give you, if you like, a couple of color profiles and a display pilot software from Mac and Windows. Display pilot. If you're a designer, you can, you can switch through all the different color profiles to see how it would look like on other people's monitors. So this is a reference monitor. Emulate other screens. And you also got this really cool shuttle puck. I don't need it myself, so I haven't installed it. Well, I guess I could, just like that. But you can easily switch through the color profiles by tapping it on. Oh, colors are different. Amazing. I'm now officially, what's it called? A creative, con a monitor poor conceptor. So guys, what did you think of this amazing review of this amazing monitor? 4K HDR, an inch of the cost of the Pro XDR display. It looks gorgeous, look, space gray, space gray goes with a MacBook Pro. I'm very impressed with this display. I'm getting used to it being non-ultra wide. What I'm loving about it of this is the height, because previously I had a lot more width, but now I've got a lot more height. It's quality, I can't hear any fans or anything like that. It's got a really thick heat sink. And uh, it runs games, it does everything, 60 frames a second. Obviously, if you're a hardcore gamer, you want a little bit more cranking on the frames per second. But for me, as a low-core gamer, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. Let me know what monitor you guys are using out there in the World Wide Webs. And, of course, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Right now it's time to do the most important test and that is the shaky stand test. I'm typing away. As you can see, this monitor isn't moving. Very, very solid. So, like I said, this guy over here, Wobble City, when I'm typing away on my keyboards, it would But now with this guy, it's a, it's a good stand. Obviously, what's great about this stand is it comes with the actual display. The actual monitor is worth about two, two Pro XDR stands. So to answer your question, so to answer your question, is this monitor a cheaper Pro XDR display? I'd say no, it's a better Pro XDR display.